Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to make a block called Road to Oklahoma. I've been having a look through some of the traditional blocks, fairly simple blocks, things that I can make using two and a half inch squares. And this one came up and it's actually a fun block. It's not one I've made previously, but I've made a small quilt using four of the blocks. So that you can see uh, this is actually one block, a quarter out here. And so these, when you get four of these together, they form this star and this other line of squares will form a nice chain. So on a larger quilt, it could be very exciting. And of course, you don't have to do it in these colors. Um, you could do it in scrap, you could do it in all sorts of different colorways and things. So I just thought I'd show you today how to make the block. So the block's going to measure eight and a half inches square, so an eight inch finished block. And I'm using all two in, sorry, two and a half inch squares to achieve that. So some of them um, we've got to join to make the half square triangles. And some of them, so you can actually break this block down. Um, I should have just had a block just to show you, I guess, um, into quarters so that you can make two lots of four patches and then two of these um, bits with the half square triangles in it. So that there's kind of four little blocks that make up the one block in the way of simplifying it. So I've already made a couple of bits, but I'll just run through how to do that for you. So obviously a four patch, I'm sure most of us know how to do a four patch, but these are my colors that I'm using. So they just need to be alternated. So we'll quickly pop those through the sewing machine and make a little four patch. So you need two of these for each block. And as I said, just two and a half inch squares. Um, for each block, you need four of this one that's going to form the chain. And the darker color that I've used that's going to form the star, you need to have six of those for each block. And you needed, I think it was 10 of the white or whatever your chosen background is for the other color. So it's great fun to use two and a half inch squares. Often we've got some bits and pieces left over that are that measurement. So a scrappy quilt would work really well. Let's bring this iron across a bit. So I'm just pressing these seams one way now, usually um, towards the darker fabric. And in this case, when I've got white, definitely towards the coloured fabric because the white lets seams show through. You can't help some seams showing through um, with this sort of quilting and, and overall when it's all finished and quilted it very rarely causes any problems if you can see the odd seam because it kind of just disappears into the quilt. So we'll just make our four patch. This is quite a fun uh, block and as I said relatively simple. It kind of fits the traditional four patch type of um, block formation um, and also contains four patches so how convenient is that so that's my little four patch and again you could if you were making a lot of these you could chain piece them and as I said it would look great in scrappy colors so that's going there now to make this little corner piece we need to have one of our background squares and one of the um, darker color for the stars so to make these triangle bits that are in this block, you need one of the background squares and obviously one of your darker or your colored squares. So I've already prepared my white squares here. I've drawn a line and I tend to use, and it's disappeared, a mechanical, here it is, my mechanical pencil. I find these really good for drawing lines because they're just nice and fine and they're always that sort of sharpness that you need. So I've drawn a line through the diagonal of my square and then I've just moved my ruler across so that my half inch mark sits over that line and I've drawn my second line um, half an inch away from the diagonal and this is so that I'm going to actually sew on both of those lines so that I'm not wasting this triangle over here it can be used later and I'll show you in just a minute so we need to do two of these and this is because we're using the two and a half inch squares there's other ways of making half square triangles but I wanted to do it all with these two and a half inch squares. So this way allows you to do that. And rather than just wasting that, we're going to save that by doing that second line of sewing. So I'm just going to come in and sew along on my sewing, on my drawn line with a diag long diagonal one. And again, if you were making a larger quilt, you, you could uh, chain piece these. You can just pop the next one in and just keep sewing if you've got a heap of them ready. 
So you need to do four of these for each block. I've already done two and I'm just doing two now just to show you. So then I'm going to come back and sew my other two drawn lines. So right on that line. So this is kind of fun. It's a little bit tedious to sit and draw all the lines, um, but sometimes we're sitting chatting or watching a bit of TV and those are the sorts of things you can do and have a whole pile ready and then just chain piece them through when you're making your quilt without any drama at all. So now I've drawn, uh, sorry, sewn on both my drawn lines and I'm just going to cut those apart now. So uh, you want to cut halfway between the two lines. So most rulers have something like a quarter inch line in from the edge. So if you lay that quarter inch in line right over your first long line of stitching, you'll find that where you're going to cut now is right halfway between your two sewing lines. And so what that will now give us is this half square triangle that we're looking for to make a quilt block. And instead of just throwing these away or having a lot of triangles that we're not sure what to do with, because you've done that extra sewing line, you've got a smaller one ready for the next project, or maybe you'll use it in the borders, or I don't know what you're going to do with it, but it's there for when you want to do something with it. So now I'm just going to press these again into the darker colour. come out just exactly the right size when we do it this way it's wonderful and now we need to make up this little four patch for the corner and so we've got it so that you've got the dark square here and your two triangles are touching it there and then just one of the background squares so we'll make that up into its own little four patch And then we can join the four patches and hop on our road to Oklahoma. Interesting names, some of the blocks. It would be interesting to know the history of why it's called that. I'm guessing somebody was on the road to Oklahoma when they worked out this design. Um, back in those pioneering days when every scrap of fabric was saved to be used for something or left over from clothing worn out clothing that they could use up the bits and pieces. So if you press your seams in opposite directions that will just nestle in nicely when we come to do that seam which we're going to do now. So I'll just join that up. So some of the traditional blocks can be made with today's fabrics as you can see you can change the whole look of a quilt by using different fabrics. They have some really interesting elements, some of the blocks. Um, and when you join some of them up, like with this one, as I, when I saw it just as a block, I didn't necessarily think that it was going to form a chain and stars until I started playing around with the design, of course. So now I've got all my little four patches and I'm going to lay these out. There's a great temptation to put these dark ones in the middle. Please don't do that. They go to the far corners. They're going through that way. And these are the darker corners on the outside or whatever color you're using, of course. So now we just need to join our four patches up to make our block. So I'm going to do that quickly here. delicious fabrics that I'm using. And pick up the next one. It's, I find it very helpful to lay my block out like I'm doing and then pick up the units. Or if you're doing lots of blocks you might have piles of the units ready to go so that you can't really join the wrong ones the wrong way. You have everything set in, in order. We like to think that we're all orderly, don't we? The reality is always something quite different. Okay, now I'm going to press these. So press one seam going one way. In fact, if you sit them both around the same way for 
for pressing purposes, when you turn it round to put the block together, so you can see I've pressed them both the same, then when we join it up, because this one will get joined, turned around to join, those seams are now going in opposite directions, which is really helpful for that little nestling thing in the middle there. So now make sure you do the right seam, that it's this one here, not this one out here. It would be an unusual block. And then our block will be done. So we're measuring eight and a half inches, which will be an eight inch finished block. Delicious in any number of color combinations. I quite like this one that I've done. It's sort of a black and it's my darker color is almost a sort of a greeny black color and then that lovely dot which all stands out nicely against the white but you might prefer a different color background scrappy colors for your stars a different color for your chain so many things you can do okay just get that a nice iron so that it sits nice and flat and there is our block so on its own possibly slightly an uninteresting block until you start combining it with itself I'm sure you could combine it with something else if you chose to but you can see that that block is a quarter of what I've done there and so that when you put them all together you'll get this star with this chain in between and so these will form stars again and the chain will continue on so I just thought that was a really fun block I'm quite enjoying having a little play with some of the traditional blocks and as I said I was trying to do something with two and a half inch squares and everything worked so enjoy the road to Oklahoma